Trialogue, that's titled as Data-Driven Personalization, crafting the tailored CX, which is the customer experience journeys, so as to say. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I'll get talking with the session moderator. I'll be very happy to be inviting him on the stage. And uh, who better to actually uh, navigate the proceedings of this discussion than him. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming with a loud, loud round of cheer, the former Deputy Managing Director and CIO of the Mammoth State Bank of India. Please welcome Dhananjay Tambe with a huge round of applause. Mr. Tambe, it's so good to see you. <laughs> like I said, if there's no discussion complete, right? Uh, if we don't have you around or the representation from SBI around. Thank you very, very much for joining. Um, you know, uh, all the more gravity to this session uh, with uh, the personalities who would be leading the talk here. May I please, of course, as you can see there on the screens and uh, as our panel is joined, they may be seated accordingly as well. Let's have Arnav Ganguly, the Senior Director and Head of Analytics and Visualization at Tata Digital. Please keep welcoming our leading minds, absolutely leading minds. We're grateful that you could take out time and be here with us. Dr. Kapil Singhal, the Vice President Data and Analytics at Vodafone Idea. Dr. Kapta, thank you so much. Let's also have Raghuram Velega, the head of Big Data at Geo Platforms. Well, it's Biggie is doing the talk, so uh, Mr. Tambe, I will request you to please share uh, this dialogue for us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll start with two experiences, you know. Uh, incidentally, I'm a consumer, they're all my service providers. So I, I, I guess you know that's the reason why they got me in to be the moderator. But two experiences. So one is about data itself. So recently we had this Lok Sabha elections. And post the Lok Sabha elections, on the 1st of June, we had the exit polls. And all the pollsters, all the pollsters told us that they have access to the best tools, the best data, uh, collected in the most scientific way and had access to the finest computing power that was available. And despite this, all of them got it wrong. So it's not merely data that matters, it's what you do with the data. It's how you analyze the data that matters. And the second is about customer experience, because this session is about customer experience. See, when we started UPI, and when the model was designed, it was a four-party model which enabled third-party service providers to provide UPI services. But initially, it was only the banks which came out with the app. But within a few years thereafter, you found that three service providers, Google Pay, Phone Pay, and Paytm, they conquered 95% of the market. So although all the banks had a head start, they should have got the first mover advantage, so to say. Yet all of them got relegated to the background because the other service providers gave a far better customer experience than the banks gave. And unfortunately, the banks could not innovate the way the others did. So with these two things, one is that data itself per se is not enough, and the second is the customer experience is what matters. Let me start the discussions, and let me start the discussion from Arnab. You know, uh, he comes from the Tata Group, and uh, person associated with Tata New. We are, all of us have heard about it. How do you think, Arnab, personalization of customer experience or use of AI, ML, data itself is helping your organization in enriching customer experience. Great. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening to everyone. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the product, uh, Tata New, essentially. For, home, uh, for people who are already using it, very good. For people who do not know about Tata New, it's just, uh, the latest uh, super app that we have built where a person can single click of the button, can actually have access to multiple services and products. Uh, and, and the products and services is across electronics, fashion, fast fashion, grocery, health, so on and so forth, right? So when, when this happens, and, and I'll take an example from, uh, from, from last two weeks back, I was interacting with my daughter, and uh, I saw her a bit irritated, and then I went up to her and said, like, what's, what's, what's the matter? And she said, like, this app is not working. And 
I essentially got to see that it's an Instagram app, and she was going through the reels. And then I realized with the, and then it is device agnostic, that the amount of time that you spend on device is inversely proportional to the patient's level, right? So what it means for consumers or, or people like us is to make sure that we reach out to the consumer at the right point, with the right communication, through the right medium, right? What it tells us is that the collaboration of data and integration is very important. Today, when we talk about AI, we only think about investment in AI as a platform, as a tool, but we do not think of the outcome. What is that we would achieve by implementation of AI? How it is going to help the end consumer? How we are going to take action? How we can, as a business, take action immediately? Today, we don't talk about taking action 24 hours later. We talk about near real-time data. We talk about taking action near real-time. But the amount of data that we have right now at the disposition is huge. So we need to process the data, then take an action. Now I'll take an example of personalization, right? For a monolithic or non-heterogeneous, homogeneous uh, platform, it is very easy to do personalization. But when you think of a new app, a person can traverse between a health, a grocery, a fashion, and flights, and hotels. How do you personalize, right? So you have multiple metrics to look at, right? Time of the day that the person is interacting, the recency of the person interacting, and so on and so forth. So it is essentially that you reside with AI taking that decision and help us doing personalization as n equals to one, which is basically next big action from the customer. Oh, very good, very good. In fact, you know, it's, uh, I can definitely realize it's an uphill task, you know? When you bring together things as diverse as pharmacy, and grocery on the same app, you know, it can be very, very challenging. And Dr. Kapil, you uh, have had a slightly different experience. I mean, uh, the, the organization that you represent, you know, had to face two behemoths, and then you have very successfully come out of it. So can you share a few of those? Uh, sure. Uh, so the things are there, everybody knows that uh, now where we are and where we were and where we are, and the only thing that we can, we came across is our through journey and we are coming across is building up our the customer experience over there. We were discussing backstage onto that particular part. And I like one Raghu has mentioned that nowadays what customer is talking about is anything that he's looking out. He says he, there are mammoth of applications, mammoth of apps are there. But whenever he's going and looking after into any kind of stuff, he says, this is my liye kya? So that's how he started with. And we come across any kind of that customer journey that we are building it up, we are giving them, and maybe we are seeing that every one of us having a kind of different needs over there. I cannot see what I want to see you, somebody, Arna wants to see, or Raghu wants to see, everybody has their own preferences and all. We say that nowadays, if you can call it as that we cannot be there with anybody, everybody over there, but our AI, or we can say that artificial stuff, we had made it that we are there with everybody who understand the need of each and every. If recharge is one of your prime need, you will see first recharge over there. Other than the services, if you will see that there are you are looking for any other value-added services over there. We are putting up that particular stuff into that part. So the way that I am bringing it over over there is that, that we are studying that what data that we are having it, what kind of customer persona that we are having it. And we are trying to present that particular customer persona in a form of virtual way to the customer. And he likes that particular. And that's how we started using the AI part over there. And one of the critical aspects, maybe, if, uh, which I would like to bring it up, nowadays we can say that I was explaining the mammoth of application and all those things. In the customer journey experience, we know that we are talking about UPI and everything, everything over there. We need to talk about the security part as well. So we need to give the customer experience that you are seeing your persona over there, you are seeing your uh, personal interest over there, but rest assured, that whatever you are seeing, whatever you are doing, a kind of transaction over this particular system, or the third party integration transaction that you are doing, you are doing through the safe mechanism onto that particular part. So nowadays we can see that bringing up a customer experience is everybody is building. It's not a kind of rocket science 
is there into the market. Everybody is saying that we are bringing up that kind of customer experience. Whenever or wherever he wants to look it at, he can look it at. But now the time, I would say that it's a kind of left shift over there. Let's add a kind of security perspective into that part. AI, we are talking about AI part over there. We might be talking about now people say collective, responsible, and all those AI. So that's a kind of experience that we need to give it up. And maybe when we were discussing it about the customer is customer, maybe each party who is involved with you, we were discussing that part, even Raghu has given a kind of insight, what's the customer definition that the Geo has created. And, and we really like that perspective over there, whether it is an employee base that you are having it, whether it is a kind of end as customer that you are having it, or whether it's a kind of you talking to some of your colleagues over there. So it's a kind of thing that you need to build up that your data should understand what somebody is, what anybody is looking for, and they should feel that it's a kind of secure experience that you are getting it up. That's how we are bringing from our VI app over there. And that's how right now we can say that, I'm proud to say that we are the, I would say that there are the three telco providers. We are number three onto that. There is no point in, uh, there is no, I would say that uh, something to hide. But if we want to rate ourselves into the app world over there in G, I will say the Google Play Store, anybody, we are the number one. The kind of reviews that we are having, it is 4.8, 4.7 kind of thing. So that gives us a kind of feeling that how our customers oh, very, are. Very good to hear that, you know. I mean, uh, that you are so conscious about your app rating. Because that tells a lot of things, you know. And especially, you know, you're given this new dimension to the whole thing that you are also focused upon the security aspect. The customer should feel comfortable that his data or whatever he's doing on your app, you know, is not going to be misused. So, uh, uh, Raghu, uh, now you also represent that family of uh, super apps, you know. So, how has been your experience on this and how are you marrying the multitude of services that uh, Reliance in general and Geo in particular has to offer? So, uh, as we're all talking about apps, right? Great. Uh, but I'll add to that a little bit, right? Customer experience is, app is just one part of the whole equation. So, I just want to say a customer experience is the time you are actually generating a lead and from the lead when you're converting that guy to become your customer, and then you are nurturing that customer to be with you for life, that's what's customer experience, right? So at Geo, we look at that whole life cycle end to end. From the point we are getting him in as a lead, making sure he's smoothly getting into onboarded into our systems, eventually using our systems very seamlessly, and then sticking with us for life, right? So there is one thing I would like to mention what uh, Mukesh Bhai as, as a mentor has mentored all of us, our whole Geo family is, we all have to be 100% customer obsessed, right? So again, I'll try to give you a definition of a customer here a little bit so everyone understands. And at least I want that, these are some of the mantras and I got some of my friends sitting out here also in the, in the, in the audience and they can concur with me, is with this mantra, he also defined what a customer means for us. We, we are part of the Geo Platforms Limited who is giving services to all our operating companies, right? For us, a customer is every engineer who's going to the field, a sales engineer, uh, a, a, a service engineer, he's a customer. So we need to make sure that that guy is happy, he's able to do his job with, with the proper kind of tools what he has and with kind of uh, dedication what he does and give results. The end customer who we have is the guy who we are catering to at the end, which is all of you guys maybe using one of our services, wherever it might be, right? And third is our development community. We build tools and technologies for our developers so that they are more performant. So now coming down to all these different areas, right? So we connect our experience to all these three people. Now, app is one place where anyways, you know, my, my colleagues have already talked about a little, so I'll add, just add a little to it, but I think they have already said much, but I'll try to add to the other areas of experience what we have to bring in. And again, coming back to some of the, the key, uh, you know, uh, directions which, which, uh, which our chairman and Mr. Manoj Bhai had given us, right? One, as I said, right, be customer obsessed. And second, what he told us that for customer experience, you know before the customer knows. A very simple sentence, right? But very, very powerful. But when that powerful sentence comes from people who are driving, you know, your companies, and you take it seriously, right? Then you start thinking, how do I make it happen, right? 
So I'll just give an example. Today, I don't know how many of you guys are Geo users here. You have Geo, okay? I am. Okay. Yeah, you have my Geo with you, right? So in my Geo, if there is a problem, and if you have a fiber connection at home and you have a my Geo and using your fiber, most of the people that go and do recharges, that's what you do today, right? You don't do much than that. But yes, if you have a fiber connection, you in your phone can go and diagnose your set-top box, your router your apps, your remote control. You can diagnose everything on your app. Not just diagnose, you can reboot your systems from your phone. Third, you can also open a ticket from here to the concern. You can track your engineer coming to your home real time, just the way. See, this all happens in the e-commerce world. We do all that stuff. Telecommunication doesn't happen. Telecommunication is now going beyond that. So you can track him coming home. You can change an appointment online for that and get it solved. Right? This all could be happening only because we had put data and AI in the mix. And it's not that we drove it. It was driven by the guys who are driving our business and operations. They were the drivers. They had been given the same mantra as, you know, customer, you should know before the customer and you should use data and AI. We as the data and the AI organization there, and even my colleagues out here who are from that same organization, we supported them to build that. And today we have got that kind of experience we gave people. So that's one experience that I would like to call out. Of course, we had the super app available with us, which has got all these things integrated. That's OK. But now the focus is going is we want to go the way Google has done. If you look at Google's story, right, Yahoo had a huge page where they had hundreds of apps in there. People get confused. Why Yahoo died? It did not die because they did not have the right technology. Yes, their, their searches were not very relevant. But even their experience was really pathetic because it was a portal. It was not a, it was a portal where you could go and do a bunch of things there. You could do email, you could do chats, you could do multiple things. But when Google came in, they said, no, no, I'm just going to do one thing. I'm just going to give you one page. I'll give you a search. You go and search from there. Then I'll take you wherever you want to go. That in a mindset, people by default, you know, they might be thinking of too many things, but they love taking the clutter out of things. So all apps needs to have no clutter. That's where data and AI comes into picture, where data now can help pinpoint and say, OK, this is what you need. Now, OK, there will be two thoughts in your company. One, your marketing guy will say, no, no, he needs to see everything because I need to sell him this. Now your customer experience guy will say, no, no, show him only this because this is what he's doing. So you have to sit and create a clear balance between these two people so the marketing guy gets an advantage to see what has to be shown by not cluttering 100 different things there. And the experienced guy can basically engage the customer and you know, give him that experience, right? So anyways, I'm just adding the context right, of right. the Thank app you. also Thank in here. Thank you very much, yeah. Raghu. In fact, uh, long answer to the short question. Probably. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that statement that you made, you know, that you should know before the customer knows it, right? Uh, it's a very powerful statement about predictive analytics. You know? uh, the clock tells me that time's up. But uh, if I can take the liberty to ask them just one question, you know, uh, today generative AI is the buzzword. All of us have been talking about traditional AI. We all know what is traditional AI and how it has been used. Is there a use case in your organizations, I'll start with Arnab, where you find that generative AI can be married with uh, predictive, uh, uh, traditional AI, and a new use case can be built, or a more powerful customer experience can be generated? Two minutes, not more than two minutes, please. OK, I'll try. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, at Tara Group, we believe that uh, we need to understand our customers a bit better every day. The reason it is a bit better every day is that you do not get to see the other side of the story at one point in time, right? Now, talking about uh, collaborative, what we call as collaborative, collaborative AI, essentially is a combination of the age-old AI and the generative AI, right? So a per perfect use case for that would be, there are two use cases, I'll just take one because of the time limit. Uh, one is chatbot, right? When you look at the chatbots of the world, they are mostly heuristic and based on certain models, predefined models, right? And it will tell you, OK, these are the questions that you can answer, and these are the questions that you cannot answer. Now think of the possibility that we have done right now with the amount of data that we have gone from the customers in terms of transactions, in terms of behavior, social, non-social, all of them, with LLM that enables us to understand the customer a bit better every day and being proactive than the reactive. So that what it means is that we are available 24 by 7 to the customer. We know the customer before the customer is reaching out to us, being based on what transaction the person is there, uh, or for what reason the customer is coming up to us, and help them in a way that is uh, scalable, and in terms of the scalability, in terms of experience of the customer as well. 
I thought I did well. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kapil? Yes. Uh, so, generative AI, we can say that it's a way of that how you will generate the customer experience out of the data that we are having. Maybe nobody in today's world, it's very, very painful that you have to call to some customer care number where you have to dial one for this, two for this, three for this, and you get a pain out of that, and finally you end up, okay, I'm not reaching out to anybody over there. It's a pain over there. So that's what where we are. We, the kind of business that we are having it, we are giving the customer the experience over here. Okay, if there is an issue, at everybody is having a fiber issue and or natural calamities, anything has happened over that part. So we want to give the customer the experience by generating that kind. If there is a kind of issue at his end, we have used the data to give them kind of things that how that can be rectified from end-to-end -end perspective from his. He just need to click it something on that on his app itself only, and things can be there. We call it a smart connect and all those things that we are coming up. So that's how things are getting rectified. And we are using those kind of perspective over there that these are the experience which we have generated. We have learned from our, we have learned from the system. We have learned from the technology over there and providing you in a kind of layman terms that you are getting your problem resolved on the click of the button right. over there. Right. That's how we are utilizing that Genai capability to improve the customer experience yeah. into a very, very, I would say that soothing manner for them and providing them the kind of minimum, minimum kind of, I would say the chances where they have to approach the customer care altogether. Okay. So that's the kind of right. thing. Thank you. So last word from you, Raghu. I'll just take it very quick, right? See, how many of you guys have heard RAG? Everyone knows retrieval augment generation. Everyone uses that, right? So that has become the mantra, 90% use cases in the, in the world today, RAG. We have added a twist to it. And I'll give you a problem statement and how this twist has helped. See, today when a fiber guy and go, guys goes to the home and installs something, and he's not able to install, he calls a THD, which is a technical services group, right? And that's a, a, a function sitting in the, in the headquarter. Now he calls that guy, that guy gives an answer, he takes it and goes and fixes the problem. What we, are doing, we have done is we have brought in generative AI there, one. The guy who's on the ground, if he has to ask a question, he'll ask the bot, and the bot will get an answer through RAG. But as the business is changing continuously, the technology is changing, the know-how is changing, we have a man in the middle who's the SME, who's the THD. So when a person asks a question, he's not satisfied, he says a thumbs down, immediately the THD gets a notification who's sitting in the center, he answers the question and says it, and that answer goes to all the guys who are on the ground. So, because in an organization, when you solve one person's problem, you solve 50 other person's problem. So now this RAG we are doing, married with the man in the middle being the THD in the case, and opening it up for everyone on the field, has really changed the productivity the things are going, right? And also we have in incorporated the customer-centric data into it. So if he's coming to my home, the guy knows exactly what he has to do in that home. Where is my S2? Where is my S1? These are different terms within the telecommunications bank. So and so. I'm just saying that how using RAG and the twists is helping increase uh, engineer productivity. Thank, thank you very much, Raghu. In fact, uh, customer experience is a topic, you know, on which we can go on and on and on. But the lady has come, you know, and she's looking at me, not in an AI way, but a very HI way, you know, telling me that it's time to go up. I do, do we have time for Q&A? No. Uh, huh? If you say, we can take up one. Yeah, maybe if anyone, because we have industry stalwarts here, and I know you yes. can uh, ask them any question on earth, but uh, in case you have any, yes? Anybody? It's not every day you get such a chance. So exercise your right, the floor is open for questions. Very quickly, but you need to decide fast whether you have a question. Anyone, or else we anyone, can call right? it a day or call it an evening, you know, so. Oh, I have a long day. I can't call it a day <laughs> yet. <laughs> so thank you. Thank All you very much. All of you cannot uh, call it a day. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, ladies thank and gentlemen. So much, thank, thank you so much, Mr. Tambi. And thank you, gentlemen, so much. We request you to please rise for a group photograph uh, because uh, the photographer has made this contract with me. You dare you let anybody go without that. So uh, let all of us come together, please, uh, for the sheer solidarity. First up, more than anything else, and of course, all that you learned about from, say, ethical considerations to any other. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Always very kind of you. And thank you uh, to all our panelists.